Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be giving you an introduction to my mini series course where I'll be showing you how to build a full stack music player application from the ground up. In this first part, I'll be giving you a basic demo of the application itself so you can see what the final result is and see how awesome it is so you can see what you'll be building. In the second part, I'll be giving you a more detailed overview of the technologies used in this, the technology stack, and how we're going to achieve this application here. All right, so here's our application. It's a React.js front-end application, a single-page application. So it's using React.js, it's using React Router, it's using Tailwind CSS for the front-end styling. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's interacting with a back-end application. So it's gonna be a Spring application with a REST API. And that's how it gets all the data. It's how it creates new songs. It's how it updates songs. So that's what makes it a full-stack application. We're gonna have a back-end, which is Spring. And then we're gonna have a front-end, which is React.js. And those are going to be communicating with each other to achieve this full application here to present something really, really cool. And so, yeah, let me give you a basic overview. So what we have here is a bunch of songs. You have some songs that you can favorite. So if you click the heart here, you can favorite your favorite songs. But here you have a list of all the songs that you have uploaded to the application. So you can view all of the things that you have. And yeah, so you can play each song. I'm not going to play any of these here because they are copyrighted. Um, they are Juice World songs. I'm a huge fan of Juice World. So this was originally a Juice World application. I just wanted to wanted a place to store all of my songs, but uh, I decided to make this into a course, like a little mini course where you can uh, see how to build a music archive application. So this is what it's called. It's called Music Archive because you can upload MP3 files and store them so you can listen to them on demand on the interwebs. Okay, so yeah, you can play songs, you can queue them. So if I click the plus thing here, it'll add it to the queue. And I open this down here, it'll show me the queue of all the songs. This is a little visual glitch, I'll fix that. But yeah, you have a playing slash queue, so you can see what song is playing and also what song is queued. So that song is queued and you can remove it from the queue by clicking the X here, and that'll remove it from the queue. And if nothing is queued and it finishes playing a song, it's going to just play another song randomly from the list of songs overall. And of course you have basic controls like uh, skipping to the next song, going back, starting over, playing and pausing, all the basics. So that's it for the homepage, very basic functionality for playing, queuing, and favoriting songs. And so the catalog page is where you can edit songs and also play and queue them as well. But uh, yeah, you can search for songs too, which is cool. So if you want to search for a song called uh, Adore You, yeah, there we go, Adore You, it'll just search for it and give you the results. You can search for anything. Okay. And you may notice that some of these titles here are really... You know, they look kind of poopy because I haven't changed them. So if you do want to edit a song, you just click the edit button here and this opens up the edit tab. So you can edit the, the title of the song and the artist itself. So you can heart it as well and delete the songs too. So you have favorite and delete buttons and then you can go back, you can save. So if I, if I want to rename this song here to just safe featuring D Savage, I can do that. So that's going to be the title of the song now. So once I'm done with that and let's say that I want this to be one of my favorite songs because I like it a lot. I can click this and click save. Now it's gonna update it and we can probably find it. Let's go ahead and search it. There it is, safe by D Savage, which is now favorited and we can play it as well. I'm not gonna play it, like I said, cause it's copyrighted. So let's say that you have a new song that you found and you wanna upload it to your music archive application. So you click upload, then you have an upload page. So we can call it night run away. And the artist is Anne Joan. I don't know who that is. And so I have a song up here. I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And then now if I click create, it's gonna upload the song to the back end over HTTP along with the other song data that we can create a song with. So boom. So here's our song down here. We can see it, we can play it, we can cue it. So if you play it, it should play now. There we go. So you can hear it. So there we go, we upload a song. It adds it to our catalog and we can play it, we can favorite it, we can queue it, we can edit it. Awesome, right? So this application here has full CRUD functionality, so create, read, update, delete, which is a very popular topic for full stack applications because those are the basic operations that you want to do for a full stack application. So you can do all of those things. You can create songs using the upload thing that I just showed you. You can read songs by clicking the home or catalog here so you can see all of the songs. Or if you edit a song, that's also reading it with the REST API. Um, you can edit songs or update them by using the edit function, which I showed you before. 
just you know edit it here and then of course you can delete songs by clicking the delete button that's it for the demo hopefully you uh, find the application really cool and are excited to create something like this for yourselves and uh, I know it looks kind of simple maybe but it's actually got a lot of components to it it's very very uh, extensive and it has a lot of parts to it that we are going to have to build from the ground up using different technologies and you're going to see the full process for doing that. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the slideshow so I can give you an overview of how we're going to do this and also the technologies involved. So the name of this application I'll be making is called Music Archive. So the primary technologies I'll be using for this application, this full stack application is Spring Boot and other Spring technologies. MongoDB will be the database service that we'll be using for no SQL database storage. For storing files like MP3 files, music files, we'll be using DigitalOcean Spaces. And so it's basically like a storage server that you can upload files to and use the Amazon S3 uh, SDK to use interact, it, interact with it. So we'll see that soon. And then for the front end, we'll be using React.js, which is a very popular uh, you know, single page application framework for building front end applications. And that will be using Tailwind CSS as the CSS framework to build really nice looking uh, front ends really easily. All right, so Spring, MongoDB, React, DigitalOcean, and Tailwind CSS. Those are the primary technologies I'll be using. So how will this work in more detail? So the backend will be a Spring application. So it's going to be an application made with, made with Spring Boot with a bunch of starters like Spring Web, Spring Data, and MongoDB, and other stuff that is provided by the Spring framework. And that'll be hooked up to a MongoDB database hosted by a MongoDB on MongoDB Atlas. So it'll be hosted on the interwebs and we can connect to it using uh, Spring Data. And then we'll have DigitalOcean Space, which is, like I said before, a storage sort of server provided by DigitalOcean that allows you to store files and get the files, upload the files. And so the Spring application will be doing that. It'll upload the files and also it'll be interacting with the database. And also it'll have an API that other applications can interact with it to get it to do stuff. So it'll be a RESTful API using HTTP. And our React application, the front end, is going to be interacting with that API to get songs, upload songs, update songs, just, you know, full CRUD API. So they're going to be working together to get the job done for this music application. So other stacks that you may have heard of is the Mern stack. So MongoDB, Express.js, React.js, and Node.js. But in this case, we'll use the MSRN stack. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a thing, but it's going to be a thing when we do it. So that'd be MongoDB, Spring, React.js, and Node.js. So Node.js and React.js will be the front end, and the back end will be MongoDB and Spring. This is not something you commonly see on, you know, tutorials online, but Spring is very, very popular in the job market. So this will be very, very good to practice your skills, especially if you're a Java developer looking to, uh, you know, make an example application with Spring uh, to build your portfolio. Okay. Anyway, so the next thing is the API endpoints that will be a part of the Spring application, the back end. So this is, like I said, a RESTful API. So it's going to follow, you know, some basic REST principles. And we're going to be using HTTP, of course, because that's just what is used for web services. We'll have a couple of routes here. We'll have a Git route to get all of the songs from the database and from the application. Then we'll have another Git route to get a specific song so that we can get the data on a specific song. And let's say that we want to edit a song. We can get the data to display on the page and then we can edit that song. And then we could use a put request here to update that song with the new data that we provide to it. So we have a put request, which is commonly used for updating. And then we also have a post request, which is going to be to create a new song. So post to slash songs is going to be provided a file to, you know, send the file to the digital ocean space to store the MP3 file somewhere. And then we'll have the song data itself, like the title, the artist and stuff like that to, you know, put into the database. So this information will be posted to the slash songs route, and that's going to create a new song, hopefully, if everything goes correctly. And the final endpoint is the delete one. So you can delete a song by providing the song ID um, and then you just, you know, have it as a delete request. So that'll delete a specific song that you provide the ID for. And yeah, so we have get, get, post, put, and delete. So that'll give us our CRUD capabilities on the back end. So create, read, update, delete functionality on the back end. So on the Spring application and then the React application is going to be calling these routes here, calling these endpoints, interacting with them to do certain things like create songs, update songs, get songs, and delete songs. Okay. Hopefully you're excited for this so far. It's going to be a really big application, a big undertaking. So I broke this down into eight steps for our overall mission. So let's see what the first step is. 
The first step will be to create the Spring Boot application. So we're going to tackle that first, you know, creating the back end. And the second step will be to hook up the database and the MongoDB database and create the song model. So, you know, represent what a song is going to be within the Java code and then also hook up the MongoDB database to our Spring application using Spring data. Three, create a DigitalOcean space and then build a storage service to upload retrieve files from it. So we're going to use DigitalOcean. We're going to create a new space server so that we can store files. And then we're going to build a storage service class within our Spring Boot application to upload and retrieve files from this DigitalOcean space. Fourth step, create a basic front-end proof of concept in the Spring application using Timeleaf. So we're not going to go ahead and right away after we finish the Spring Boot backend build a front-end using React. We're first going to build a simple uh, front-end using Spring itself uh, with Timeleaf to just prove to ourselves that our services like the storage service and the MongoDB part of it actually works. So we can retrieve the data, upload data, and stuff like that. So we're going to try doing that first before we do anything with the React application. So after we prove that capability, we're going to do step five, which is build a simple REST API for the songs so that we can have a front end or some other thing or an application that interacts with the back end. So simple enough. Step six, build a React application and set up Tailwind CSS so that we can start building components and building the application. Step seven, build the front end with full CRUD interaction with the backend API. So just basically literally build the application itself. So create songs, delete songs, update songs, list songs, etc. This will probably be the hardest part of the overall um, process that we're going to go through. And the eighth part is going to be the deployment of the application. So once we finish coding everything, we're going to deploy it to the interwebs so that you can show your friends or you can, you know, have it as a portfolio project that, you know, someone else could view like a future employer. Okay.